Greetings, mobile accomplishers. Welcome to the Verge Mobile Show. I am one of your hosts, Dieter Bone. Should I go second because I'm seated next to you? Yeah. I'm Chris Sigler. Uh, and since I'm seated next to Chris, I will go third, and I'm Dan Seifert. And we are joined remotely by our good friend, Vlad Savov, who I believe is on the line. I hope I am. Yeah. Hey, there Vlad. He How are you doing? Okay. It's still a mystery to me whether I'll be visible uh, we can if see we have you. a video stream going for this show. We're, we're oh, looking you at me. you. We're looking at your okay, plaid shirt. I will say kudos on the lighting. Yeah, you've done, you've done really well for yourself. Vlad, I do have some, some concerns about uh, your beard. It looks as though you may have uh, shaved it at some point. Um, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I'm taking a fifth on that one. You can't take the fifth. You, you can't take the fifth. You're not allowed to take the fifth. You don't, you don't live in America. Yeah, you're Only a, Americans get the fifth. You're a queen subject or whatever they call you guys. Also, you're, you're on video. <laughs> yeah, both, both of those things are valid. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the third thing is valid, actually, as well. I have a video. Um, I do not have the liberty to have Comcast dominating my internet program service. Um, so, yes, I can't take the fifth. The truth is, we were away the past couple of weeks because I had to regrow the beard and uh, cover up that little brief moment where I, ha I didn't have one. There we go. Uh, but now we're back. And Chris very subtly skipped past that detail. <laughs> uh, so yeah, come on, been... guys. We've got so much to freaking talk about. We do. Yeah, but we're not going to. We're not going to. We're not going to try and talk about everything because that would be madness. That'd be insanity. Be we're insane. gonna, we've got we've got some things that we have to talk about. But it like has been a good beers. three weeks, three years. It's been an eternity since we've been here. And I don't know. We should we should just talk about what happened today. Today, yeah. what happened was this yeah. right here. This is the new one, oh, the one M8, the one awkwardly named phone. 2014. 2014. However you like to. Uh, it just vibrated at me, and I don't know why. Oh, I just turned it on somehow. I just like. I think you did. You double tap it. I must have. That's. I, I don't know. So th this this phone is. You know, it, it's funny. We've kind of struggled a little bit with this device, I think, because the story in many ways is, is the same as it was last year, which yeah. was that this is HTC's last stand, but that was the story with the, uh, the one in 2013. So really what they've done is they've taken the 2013 one and quote unquote refined it. Uh, and what's really striking to me about this phone, tell me if you guys disagree, but um, you know when the leak photos were, were circulating the web, I felt like it and, looked like a, a steaming... Ev everything leaked. Yes, everything leaked. <laughs> everything it, leaked. And it, 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 it looked like a steaming pile. But then I, when you see the phone in person, it's a really nice looking... So, so, so I disagree. I think that seeing the phone in person is not all that different from seeing it on the internet. I think that it is not as, uh, like, harshly beautiful as the original one. It's, it's, it's curvy and whatever. Holding it is much right. nicer. That's mm. the point I wanted to make, is that as soon as you pick it up and feel it in your hand, you can feel how much, how different it is from the prior model. Like, it just feels so much nicer. It feels so much different. And you can feel that, you know, they say, like, there's 20% more metal or something in the body of this, and you can actually feel the difference. Well, I also prefer the brushed thing. aluminum to the sandblasted uh, metal. See, I'm going to disagree yeah. with you there. I like, I like the sandblasted metal myself. Vlad agrees with me, I think. Will someone please agree with me on something? <laughs> Vlad, no. please. I, I agree with Chris. Uh, and Thank the you. thing is, both of you guys can be satisfied because there's this dark gray version, which is the flagship variety, which is the brushed uh, aluminum uh, really? look on the back, which really? I'm a fan of. I, just, I, I prefer that. <laughs> but then also hard. the classic look is still available in the light silver version, which is the one that most closely resembles last year's HC1. And there's the golden version, which I'm really no fan of the color, but again, it's well built and constructed. And just to correct Dan, because it's kind of a, an important point, the new HTC One doesn't have 20% more metal. It's actually gone up from 70 whatever percent to 90 whatever percent. You are correct. Yes. So it's 20 percentage points more. 20 points, right? Yes. So like, what, what what is the other 10% yeah. of so, the phone? No, it's ninety something. Love. Well, we're talking Unicorn about the, uh, the, re the rest of it is ivory. It's, it's actually the rest it's, of it is conflict really just, metals. Um, <laughs> conflict minerals. <laughs> no, the rest of it is the plastic inserts where the boom sound speakers are, um, and then the display obviously isn't being counted because that's like half the phone. Right. Okay. 
Okay, fair enough. Um, I mean, it's 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 beautifully built. It's yeah. beautifully built. The thing the thing that I would say, um, there's, there's two downsides actually to two actually very good things. Um, as Dan says, the hand feel of this phone is brilliant. It, it really just feels robust and good. But it's it's and okay stifle your chuckling it's the length of it it's just too long for me no exactly uh, like, compared to a five inch phone i wanted to actually laugh at robust hand feel but <laughs> but continue <laughs> so when i no, first yeah. when i first saw it i, I thought phone like the nexus 5 i mean when i first saw it i thought Sorry, the same I, thing uh, because it's it's taller it's taller than last year's model and it's noticeably <laughs> taller than last year's model but you know when you use it uh because they moved the buttons from that weirdly awkward almost at the bottom position to on the screen they're actually a lot easier to reach with your thumb when you're holding the phone in your hand uh than even last year's model which was shorter so like you totally this thing is it's too big just like every other phone that's too big no but the thing um, that makes it too it big is, is the, easier to use the thing that makes it too big is the speakers on the top and the bottom so it just makes the whole freaking thing tall uh, like the Nexus Five, mm -hmm. uh, the screen is n like virtually identical in size. I think. I mean, it seems super close to me, and uh, it's just it, it feels way better than uh, than the than in my hand in terms of being able to reach the stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the same. I mean, the same thing could have been said about last year's too. It was taller because of the speakers. Yeah. But which phone sounds better? Well, uh, it does have. Boom sound. It does boom. Have Two things happened during the live blog today. Uh, they had uh, HTC had their event, and it was fine. It was in a a play a warehouse uh, next attached to the post office by Penn Station in New York. It was unbelievably cold in there, um, and then the Wi-Fi didn't work. And then it did. It was great. And then they did the event, and that was fine. But during the event, uh, they they said boom sound, and I had to write boom sound, and I had to write boom sound unironically. Um, did you capitalize the S properly? I, I did capitalize the <laughs> S. The camel case got in there. And then uh, somebody on stage at one point said, and I quote, 2013 was the year of the selfie. And I just had to write that out. <laughs> like, that is a sentence that I heard. I mean, hit enter. That just, there. It was added to the OED. No, it wasn't added to the OED. Or whatever it is. <sighs> Man, see whatever it is, no. not the real OED, the online OED. <laughs> well, to that point, the the camera has a selfie option. There literally yeah. is a selfie Instead option of in the camera software and the new one. Does it no. make your yeah. face more beautiful, um, or what's the story with it? Uh, no, it just it, you you hit a thing and it you you swipe up to switch well, the uh, the camera angle. Does it have the beauty things? Because last year's definitely had the beauty things. No, that was uh, ZTE or something. Was no, it? no, the the one had that too. Oh. So it's a five megapixel camera on the front, right? And four on the back. And four yep. on the back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is like this is like the ultimate mullet phone. It is all business, straightforward, <laughs> nothing special about a camera on the front, and it's party wild ultra pixel time on the back, including the uh, two color flash to true, true tone. True tone. Yeah. And the uh, and the depth sensor. Depth sensor, right? So we should talk about the depth sensor. It it is supposedly lets you do Lytro like refocusing, mm -hmm. but it's not true Lytro like refocusing. It does, in fact, accurately measure depth. So it can it knows that Dan is far away and Chris is close. But the only thing you use it for is applying crazy after effects, and it uses that depth information to apply the effect. So if you want to apply bokeh, it just blurs stuff that's far away. If you want to apply pencil sketches, it pencil sketches things that you don't focus on it's cool so but th this this type of like that that whole like refocusing thing has been like this trend with manufacturers nokia introduced it lg has it yeah and yeah. They, they all do it differently though like the nokia and the lg and i think sam uh samsung probably does it too where they take a series of photos and they're at all different focus points and then they stack them together and then you can like choose afterwards uh, the thing that is key different with the one is that it is just taking one photo and that secondary sensor is capturing all that depth data so it doesn't need to stack the photos, uh, which takes longer. Um, and, you know, HTC says that this, this whole refocusing ability and, you know, silly green screen type of effects or whatever, that's just kind of just like the beginning. At least they think it's just the beginning of what this can do and they're going to release an SDK and have people have fun with it. Mm -hmm. we'll Manufacturer-specific SDKs are always a bad idea. Yeah. You know, and what are you talking about, introduced two oh, They today. always get tons of support. Yeah. <laughs> they introduced Blinkfeed and this today. Well, the, so the, Blinkfeed does do a, cool, a couple cool new things, right? Yeah. It has Fitbit integra integration. It has Foursquare integration. Mm -hmm. 
I think that they tease that there are going to be some more things in the future. It has keyword integration, so you you can and like what everybody is going to do instead of like search. Well, they're, they're, I think their example is searching for mountain climbing or something ridiculous. I don't know, but like everybody's going to just put in their name, just like. It's your home screen. It should have you know all the news stories about you. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> you realize that for ninety nine point nine nine seven percent of the population, it would just never return anything. No, unless you're Barack Obama, right? <laughs> or Chris Ziegler, <laughs> or Chris Ziegler, yeah. who's making news on a daily basis. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, so here's the the million dollar question for you, gentlemen, yeah. uh, and Vlad, you as well. Mm -hmm. Are you going to get the sense version or the well, GPE version? <laughs> Before you jump into I that, I just want to say that you can buy the sense version today. You can yeah. walk into a Verizon store and buy the Sense version. Just today, Verizon. Which is, yeah, but you, just can, Verizon. You, can, you can order on AT&T and Sprint online and have it delivered tomorrow. And T-Mobile, right? T-Mobile is... Vague, <laughs> vague <laughs> next month. Green <laughs> hain The other carrier. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's... Either way, the fact that HTC announced this phone this morning, at least here on the East Coast, yeah. it was this morning, it was afternoon in, in London, and then three hours or two hours after the, less than two hours after the announcement, you can walk into a store and buy it is pretty unprecedented. Mm -hmm. uh, Apple hasn't even done that with the iPhone, and Apple always brings its products to market very quickly. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty cool. So well, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's really important because now they are guaranteed to have two weeks where the thing might actually sell before Samsung destroys them. <laughs> and well, well, the, the saddest part and, and this is a point that Drew uh, Bamford brought up in, in Dan's report, is that um, uh, Drew Bamford being uh, their software designer. Um, yeah. uh, there is so much more attention to design detail paid to this device, and really last year's one as well, compared to Samsung. I mean, David mentioned this in his review. Like with, with a Samsung phone, you're not buying a phone, you're buying features. Right. And and with the one you're buying, you're buying a phone. So that's true. But on the other hand, I gotta say, Sixth Sense. By the way, the third thing at this live blog <laughs> that I had to type out multiple times <laughs> that I was not happy about, Sense Six, whatever. There's a lot of gimmicky features on here. Like there are there are um, one, two, three, four, five different ways to turn on the phone with gestures. And they don't like you just gotta like like if you the first time you do it, it's like, hey, you just did a thing. It's like, okay, that's weird. And then every time I open up like open up the camera app, I had to hit like close on like six dialog boxes telling me how stuff worked. There's a lot of gimmicky stuff that they put yeah, in. Yeah, but the that's a one time here. thing, right? Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like you need those uh, indications on the first time you do a gesture so you know what the hell you just did. Um, so uh, again, we haven't had these phones for a long time, so I, I figure that would be just kind of an irritating thing when you first pick up the phone. It helps you learn the gestures, and then you progress from that. But I agree with Dita. I don't think that the gestures are necessarily all that useful. I haven't been using them at all. And one of the shortcomings for me is actually double tap to wake. First of all, we all know that I'm in love with it. Ever since the Nokia N9 days introduced it, LG has embraced it. It's beautiful. And uh, HTC has done it, and somehow has managed to screw it up. Uh, what's, what's it's screwed, screwed up, up a it? very particular way that I use it. Well, here's the thing. They expect a motion gesture of the phone before they accept double tap. So if you just have the phone laying down on the table like I have right now and you double tap the screen, nothing happens. So it is actually there's a motion gesture and then it starts being responsive to the swipes and things like that. And and that's what that's what I like to do. I just have the phone sitting down on my desk and I want to check notifications. No, but swipe up works. Screen. Swipe up works, bro. Just swipe up. Uh, that's yeah, I, I'm a double tapper. Sorry, <laughs> it's too late. Did you see, did you see that LG has uh, added a thing to knock on where you can like actually knock a password? Yes, it's called knock, knock code. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Knock, that knock is code. just so completely unnecessarily complicated. Uh, it's it's like your pattern unlock and things like that, but you just tap the blank screen and then it, magic happens. Uh, but yeah, that magic works. Like, like, yeah, like so here's the thing about so that people. is if anybody turns that feature on. Literally every phone on the planet will be unlocked with shave and a haircut two bits. Right? You lost me, Dieter. Okay. Let it go. <laughs> the, the listeners, the viewers, they get my jokes. They're hilarious. Um, okay, so we, didn't, we need to go back to the camera before we get to Chris's $64,000 question. Um, meh. Right? Meh. It's the camera. Like, like it's it's great it's great that. in low light, but uh, uh, you know there's 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 nothing here that makes me go oh my god, 
Like they, they took a shot with the ultra pixel thing. And instead of being like, yeah, it was a good idea. We're going to just go increase the megapixels, but still claim it's ultra pixel, just make a better camera. They just added a second camera to the same camera. And there were shortcomings with the original camera last year. And I think there are shortcomings with it now. Well, yeah, but l- l- let me say the positive stuff. I, I want to just lay out the happy stuff here, which is that the operation of this camera is just, it embarrasses the Galaxy S5. Because today uh, I had a Galaxy S5 around at the event, uh, and I've got to tell you, Bulgarian reviewers are getting Galaxy S5s, and uh, I'm contemplating <laughs> actually flying back to Bulgaria to get one of those damn phones. Yes. Okay. Uh, so there was a there was an S5 at the event and we, we literally had the two phones side by side taking photos um, and actually the S5 was exposing the scene better but it was just so slow and it was this delay and, and the HC1 is just murdering it it's just instant it's like you tap picture is taken it's ready you want to get into the gallery instant everything just super smooth super fast so as far as the software side of thing goes and also the menus uh, to switch between software mode switch between front facing and rear facing camera they're just brilliant. Like, I cannot say anything bad about that software. I think it's really nice, really smooth uh, and snappy. But uh, I'm with you guys. Like, adding the second sensor with that depth um, sensing at the moment, it's just a gimmick. Like, there's nothing uh, compelling or unique that makes you want this over any other phone. And I think they really should have done something better with the sensor. I think uh, the HC one from last year, that was not a strength. And HC could have made it a strength this year. Uh, but didn't. So that's the disappointing side. Well, but it, it leaves them room. It leaves them a very clear-cut place to improve the 1M9 this time yeah. next year. So the one thing that is cool Are they going to be here this time next year? Uh, so, you know, on the, the Moto X, you do the, the, the screwdriver twist thing. This, If you turn it sideways and hit the volume button, it j- launches right into the camera. That's actually really cool. That's a really smart way to do that. The twist is the worst. I actually thing. Like oh, the, the twist. twist is the best. I use it's the twist the all the time. I pull it out of my pocket like this, and I go, and the camera's open, and I can take a picture. Yeah, that's, a, that's some James Bond shit right there. It is. It is literally the worst, and I've never gotten it to work. <laughs> it's like I'm jumping out of the helicopter, and I'm like, selfie. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> And your other hand is still free to fix your bow tie, so you can get yeah. that just in one it's motion. Like, it's like I pull the camera out, and I pull my uh, my 38 out, and I'm like... 38? <laughs> Whatever he uses. Come on! I'm such, I'm, I, 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 I would I, assume I, he I, uses a 9mm, but I'm not sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, uh, James Bond... Uh, Walter, Walter, yeah, Walter PPK. Yeah, okay, right. are we done? Okay. Yeah, PPK. you're right. Okay. Yep. Also a Beretta early, but we're going to let that go. <laughs> <sighs> no, but, but what what caliber is oh, the Walter BPK? Who cares? If it's a thirty eight, then uh, oh, it's right. a seven sixty five. Yeah. No, okay. wait, 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 no, it's a seven millimeter, isn't it? Seven sixty five. Yeah, yeah that's NATO, I think. Yeah. Anyway, that was a weird. Guys, segue. what's what's the physical gesture for when a conversation is completely going over your head? Like, how do you signal that visually? With, with, with a, a hand like this. Yeah. And then and then it launches the camera. Okay, well, I can ask you guys. <laughs> so back to my million dollar question: Who is buying which version of the HTC One M8 2014? I'll tell you which version I'm buying: Turbo Championship Edition. Neither. Yeah, I don't think I'm. I'm, not, I, I'm I don't not know. If I, I may not be able to stick money. to that, but look, I got I've got a Nexus Five, and the camera on the Nexus Five is itself not much of a champ, but uh, I like. Comparing these two phones, I can't see, I can't see spending the money. If you had a red Nexus Five, I might agree with you. Uh, that's fair. But the black one, I don't know. Uh, um, I, if I were to buy one, I would probably. So it, it all depends on whether or not the camera software on the Google Play Edition is as strong as it is on the regular Sense Edition. Mm. If the if that is the case, then. I would probably go with the Google Play Edition, but Sense has got some nice stuff where it actually lets you reorganize the uh, quick menu, the, the quick settings menu, where you can like reorder stuff and add stuff, and you can actually add the option for mobile tethering, at least on the international edition. I'm sure that AT&T will take it away because that's <laughs> how they do. Um, but that's pretty impressive, and I might that might make me want to switch. I, you know, I can take or leave Blink Feed. Um, 
This thing is just wicked fast, though. Nexus 5 doesn't have boom sound. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. I so so my, my take on it is last year I bought the Google Play edition of the one, and the reason that I bought the Google Play was because I could have Android 4.4 or whatever immediately, and, you know, updates were coming very quickly to that. And when the last year's one was launched, I think it launched with, like, Android 4.1, which was way behind the curve for yeah. for Android versions. Um, but, you know, if I were to buy one this year, I'd almost lean towards the Sense model. It's already got the latest version of Android. HTC has been really aggressive at pushing out updates, especially if you buy, like, an unlocked version. Uh, and, you know, some of the things on the Sense that don't really bother me as much anymore, Sense 6 is a lot cleaner, a lot flatter, it's a lot faster. I can very easily put the Google Now launcher on there and do away with Blinkfleet entirely. And, you know... I get, also get the software yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, my or real answer software, might be the, the Google Play edition of the GS5. I know. I mean, <laughs> weird, I know, right? In, in Band-Aid Gold. Weirdo. Weirdo. Vla- Vlad, oh, God, no. Vlad, no, no, no. what about you? I, th- I think uh, Dita's uh, call might be the good one. Why? Um, Why do you I'll want come back to that at the end. Focusing... Well, hang on a sec. Focusing on the HC one to start with, I, I actually completely agree with Dan uh, and, and Dita again. Sense 6 doesn't trouble me all that much, and I'm finding myself using Blinkfee. Like, I feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bemoaning Blinkfee for the longest time, but I, I'm using it. I don't mind. I've got The Verge. I've got Polygon on here. Um, I've got a couple of uh, UK newspapers, and those are interesting stories. And uh, like Dieter says, the quick menu is indeed quick and customizable. And the big distinction for me between this and Samsung software which I just find intolerable, is that Samsung is just way too many features and options. And it just takes you so long to read through everything in order to be able to make a choice and a decision that by the time you finish customizing it, you just fatigue. Then you're like, okay, I'm done with this part. I, I just need to go and do something else in my life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what I would say is having spent time with this, um, when I first heard that there would be a Google Play edition last year, I would have been like, yes, you know, fist bump, uh, Bump and pump, whatever, both. What? What? Uh, bump and pump. Google Play what's the, yeah, what's the hand feel of with. that gesture? <laughs> <laughs> Does that launch the camera? Yeah. Well, if there's anybody nearby, I will do a fist bump. Yes, there's Google Play edition. But if there's nobody nearby, I will do a fist pump. Okay. <laughs> right. Fair so enough. now we've got that cleared up. That would have been last year, but now I'm like, well, okay, Google Play edition. That's uh, about as good as the phone that is available to buy today. So, you know, I. I think that's a great credit to the improvements HD has made uh, in its software. That being said, I do agree that the Nexus 5, I mean, it's so much more, uh, it's so much cheaper and more affordable, um, and it's comfortable. Like, it doesn't have anything terribly excellent about it, but just like the camera, I'm just comfortable with it. Uh, I'm settled in with its uh, limitations, and I just don't see, I just don't see this phone to have that unique, special thing that compels me to go away from a Nexus 5 or to spend the extra money for a Nexus 5. And the thing I will say about the Galaxy S5 is you get rid of that crazy nonsense Samsung software and you ignore the silly colors, it actually feels good in the hand. Like the texture of its back is pretty comfortable. And, you know, over the long term, the HD one just kind of feels like it's almost too premium. And I feel like if I own one, I you know what? I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy the Galaxy no, S5 because I don't deserve the HTC one. I'm not good it's enough. It's too good for me. Vlad, hey. Vlad, um, how often do you wash your hair shirt? No, God, my, my jokes. What? Your hair shirt, monks. They wear hair shirts because they're punishing themselves. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Walter PPK. <laughs> No, you're right. I should have known the PPK. I, uh, I, that's that was my that was my bad, not yours. But the hair shirt was one toke over the line. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Vlad, continue. Also, Bulgarian monks uh, in my defense. <laughs> they also get review units early, apparently. Uh, but 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 no, ser- seriously, guys. Uh, I feel like with the HD one, I would be a little bit too precious about it with that uh, fine finish and the metal and everything else. Whereas the Galaxy S5 just feels like something you really. Can just have and toss around the place and I don't know. But, 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 um, but Vlad, if, if, if the finish is just too precious for you, you can cover it up with the dot view case. Show them the front. Show them the, the knocker e thinger. Let's see, where's my camera? There, there we go. Okay, so oh. which is like literally the only guy who's excited about the case. Oh, that's no, pretty uh, cool. No, dude. no, no I mean it's just... pretty. It's pretty dope. Like 
That's that, pretty like yeah. it's just adds this like level of like fun and whimsy and you can see some notifications and, and the touch weather works through it. And touch works through it. So like if someone's calling me, I can swipe down to answer the call or I can swipe up to ignore it without ever opening the case. Yeah, can you flip the case over and then take a picture with it? Like open up the case. So you know it's and not now, perfect. now take a picture. Oh so, uh, well, yeah, that's you, you pretty, can't you can't take mm-hmm. a picture when the, the case is like flipped in the back because they didn't put a hole for the camera. Uh, and it is a fifty dollar <laughs> case that is a lot of plastic and rubber uh, and does not feel $50. And the notifications are limited to first-party apps, so third-party apps don't show notifications and stuff. But, you know, all of those other major complaints aside, uh, I think it's really, really cool. And it, and it, it won't work on the GPE <laughs> version, right? Uh, sure. You know, I don't know. I, because it uses... It, the only thing it works with are the Sense apps. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I, I, I doubt it'll work on the GPE version. Like, it'll work as a case, but you won't get the, the fun dot right. matrix view. Um, but it's fun and they're coming out with these cool colors. I got to see a couple of them in their design studio. The orange looks really hot. The blue looks really hot. Yeah. It's kind of weird that they're only launching it with gray. Cause that's like, it's a fun accessory and they're launching it in the most block. Color this, yeah. This thing screams be, to be yellow or orange or yeah. red or like it screams, look at me and, yeah. and, and, and the gray is very subdued. Yeah. But I know Chris is going to buy like one. I'd just like to remind you that. No more than 20 minutes ago, we were bemoaning the fact that this phone is rather chunky and large. And now we're celebrating the fact that it has a case that adds extra you know, plastic it's, it's and funny. a flap on it. It's funny Come that on. you mentioned that because, you know, I was when I was speaking to Scott Croyle, when we were doing our, our behind the scenes look here, I was like, you know, you guys spend all of this time and energy designing this beautiful phone that feels great in your hand. How does it feel when somebody just slaps a case on it? And he's like, you know, the reality of the matter is people put cases on their phones because they have them for two years or three years or whatever it is. And they're really expensive and they don't want to drop them and break them and scratch. Them I and have all seen that stuff. a dropped, uh, um, review unit that was dung, uh, dung, ding, ding, yeah. Dung, I mean, it, it, as, as much metal up. as you put up on the, on ding, the phone, ding. you drop it onto concrete, it's going to get damaged. And, uh, you know, he's like, at least we made something fun with the case. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's, it's fun. fun. I, I it's whimsy. Say that this There's, case just do would it for be the much more interesting to me. Whoa. Sorry, this case would be much more interesting to me if it had an AMOLED display underneath it. Because most of the notifications, uh, again, it's a dot matrix look where dots uh, are illuminated on the screen uh, underneath the, the cover. And, I mean, I agree, that's a, that's a clever and kind of a throwback look. So, fair enough. Uh, but with an AMOLED display, you're not using the entire backlight when you're showing those notifications. So it's really power efficient as well, as well as being cute. That's true. Uh, whereas with the HC1, because it's an LCD display, you are always using the full backlight. Yeah. Uh, even though it's a gorgeous display, I mean, we're, we're not going to quibble about that too much. And by that same logic, Vlad, um, the, the, the one doesn't have active notifications like the Moto X uh, because they just can't do it in a power efficient right. way. So, Chris, you, know, actually, uh, you um, asked that big $64 million question, and you have yet to answer it. The value keeps going up. Like, Dieter tried to make it a $64,000 <laughs> question. I tried to, tried to make it $1 million, now it's, now it's $64 million. It's, like yeah, the, it's, it's a pretty stakes, pricey question. Uh, I think, you know, I was originally leaning GPE, but now I'm starting to lean Sense um, because I'm really into the case. Uh, Sen- you're right. Sense has gotten way better. How long have the- you been using an iPhone? Uh, close to two years. Uh huh. And this is going to get you to switch. Uh, well, yes, and here's why. All right. Uh, because I am not surviving a single day without a Moto 360. Oh, we've got to talk about this. The, se- <laughs> the second the 360 hits the market, I am uh, I'm hopping on that bandwagon. It's not going to be iOS uh, compatible. So Yeah, so, well, it could be. You don't know that for No, sure. it's called Android Wear. There's no way that this thing's going to be iOS compatible. Well, possible. Google Glass is, is iOS So the Moto 360 yeah. is a smartwatch, right? Yep. Oh, Vlad. Vlad, Vlad, Vlad. <laughs> Vlad, Vlad, <laughs> Vladdy, Vlad. No, you were on listen, vacation. He was on vacation. Listen, it's it, not his it, fault. It takes a lot of effort and focus to grow this beard. Okay? So <laughs> I, I was intensely focused well, on thought, my talks. Vlad, I thought you were about to make some big point about the Moto360, but you were genuinely just asking what the Moto360 is. So <laughs> we should talk but, about but actually, all of this stuff. The Moto360 is nothing at the moment. Like, I, I really no, want to highlight You're wrong that about that. No, 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 no. Like, I, uh, you, you, I, need to tell, I need to tell you you're wrong about that because I want to believe so badly in this thing. And, and when Jim Wicks did the online hangout, right. he had one on his wrist and he was 
futzing around with yeah, it. And it's it, like it was a real thing, and real screens went whizzing by on his wrist, and you could see it. It was like a quarter of an inch square on a giant monitor, and it looked real, and I believe in it. <laughs> it looks like my watch that I have here. Just imagine this isn't an analog face, and it's a t- round touchscreen. Yeah, it, and it it's looks bigger than that, similar. though. Yeah. It's, probably, it's probably a little bigger. Yeah. Wait, Wait, is, it's thick, is that a Moto 360? Oh, my yes, God. Yes, it is, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's by the way that's I the have craziest to looking watch. To beat you in the face until you give me your Moto 360. <laughs> uh, so it looks great. It's, it's the th- the there's Android Wear uh, you know overall, and then there's the Moto 360 specifically, and I love them both. <laughs> and I, I need to not be so giddy about this, but I was having this conversation with David Pierce, who wrote the excellent uh, HTC One review and many other excellent reviews, um, and I was like, look, this is what the smartwatch should be. They should take what they did with Google Glass and make it suck a little bit less and put it on your wrist. It should, And they, they should, like, Google now it up a little bit and put it on your wrist. And you know what they did? That. It, it is very Google now heavy. And they they, um, they they did notifications really intelligently. It it does this thing that Pebble did right so far in, like, the, the way that they've shown off. And maybe they're going to screw it up with more apps and more garbage later. But, like... It gets notifications right, and it gets some ambient alerts right, and that's all it tries to do. It just makes sure it nails those experiences. It works with current Android notifications. People can extend stuff, and they can start working on that now. Um, like, as a first-gen platform, if these things come out, if they're not slow as hell, and if a battery can last for a day and a half, which are all big ifs, but if they can do those things, then I am super excited for this. And they're not... Ob- Obscenely expensive. Well, okay, four things. <laughs> right. Now, I, I, Other than the four most important things for a product, <laughs> it's well, awesome. <laughs> well, but, but also I think that if they had just debuted it with uh, the G-Watch or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, God, the LG been, G-Watch? Yeah, it would have been, uh, it would have fallen, the announcement would have landed with a thud because it looks exactly like how you expect a 2000s era smartwatch to look. Yeah. And the Moto 360 looks like the future. And that's what really... It's, it's pretty crazy. The Really, the only difference between the Moto 360 and the G-Watch and, and a lot of other smartwatch concepts is the fact that it's round. And like... like no, that's and, not true. No, two things. You're right. That's the big thing. But the other thing is that the G-Watch has a bezel. The, the, the a Moto huge bezel, yeah. The yeah. Moto 360 has no bezel. But, like, you know, the fact that it's round, you know, well, Motorola guys, talks is, a lot about how that, point. like, makes people think of a watch when they see it. And the, and Motorola is right. Like, it looks like a watch that you'd wear on your wrist. I mean, I, it, I it prefer looks square like watches. Watch, but like, with I, a screen. Yeah, but but I, I, prefer, I prefer square watches, but I also prefer pretty watches. And the LG G watch is just horrendous looking. Well, it's not, it's not, it's okay, just not horrendous. Moto 360 looks sick. Because it's a freaking Brenda so far. No, it's and, not. And th- this is the thing that troubles but, me about but, it. But Vlad, uh, okay, we, the, I, I Motorola you, was on camera using it. You said it. that, Dieter, but... Right, but he wasn't using this tiny freaking bezel um, and, and the awesome display and everything else. And he wasn't getting more than a day's worth of battery life out of it. It was like a glimpse. So, it, to me, it's like we can be excited about the potential... But I don't think that this uh, announcement necessarily should make us any more excited or feel like it's coming anytime sooner. They said than, summer. Um, they said it's coming this so summer. So here's, well, here's why we're excited, Vlad. The potential Vlad. of like, the really ideal watch that satisfies all of uh, Deez's conditions. What, I don't think that's anywhere near this summer. Yeah, that's so that's fine. fine. That's fine. But when was the last time a product, a technology product, was announced that made you go, Holy shit, I want that. It's been a little while, right? Where you you like like felt it. You're like, that is awesome. Like, it's been a while. Well, I, I might so like, that feels like a new category that well. feels like, whoa, that like just grabs you from your unmentionable parts. I mean, last year when the the one uh, the Google Play Edition one like was available for sale, like yeah. I bought it the minute it was like on for sale. So yeah, the, this thing, this this Moto three hundred and sixty could be vaporware. It could be too expensive and too slow and have terrible battery life. Uh, I don't think Motorola is that stupid. Yeah, like right, uh, but they, even but but the reason that we're excited is because they're at least like laying out an ambitious but seem, but uh, vision that actually seems achievable in a real product and not some pipe dream concept video that like Microsoft used to make. That's what's exciting about it is like everything that they're showing seems achievable and we believe that Motorola could probably achieve it 
and it seems like it's the right thing to do for a watch that you could pull off in a V1 product. Right. That's why I'm excited because like there's enough that's right here to make me like excited about technology. It's it's so exciting to me that it actually makes me really second guess Google's decision to sell the company. Like <laughs> <laughs> like Google needs as long as they're going to be in the wearables game, which they're still making glass and by all by all appearances they're going to do a consumer version. As long as they're in that game, they need uh, hardware chops. And this three six the, the the 360 and the concept behind it, the design behind it, are really um, exquisite. Like it looks, it, it is the the first and only smartwatch that, like you say, Dan, like it just it looks like a watch, and people around you aren't going to recognize it as being anything but a watch. And that's so important for a product in this category. Mm, I don't think it looks exactly like a watch. I don't think that's I think it, it's more watch esque, but I don't think the goal I mean, of a wearable but if it, should if, be to try and mimic. It's 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 the it's the new right. schemorphism. It's right. it's it's hardware schemorphism. It should be honest to what it is. No, it should not because you, the, the difference between a, a smartphone and a smart watch is that a smart watch is a place that's visible. It's jewelry, and the, so the only way it works. Yeah. Is so, if but it, it has to look good. We're gonna get to like. This is a piece of wearable technology. I've yeah. made this point so many times, right? Like, yeah. this doesn't look alien to you. It's become part of our cultural acceptance that this piece of technology is okay to wear. We will get to a time when wearable technology with screens and other gigas will be acceptable. We're in a weird middle point where we want it to look like what we think of as a tr traditional watch. The reason the Moto 360 is awesome is because it just doesn't look like a steaming pile of garbage. It looks actually really awesome on its own merits. But you know why the eyeglasses work is because they're available in literally thousands of styles. That's something that you can't say for, for technology of any sort. Um, best case scenario, you have three colors to choose from. So I think that like one of the things that make has well, made... Well, hang on, Chris, you can do that with headphones. Ooh. Yeah, but but headphones aren't where like right, sure because they are, actually because on, I can't see you guys, when D2 was saying this is a piece of wearable technology, I was like, is he talking about a headset at the moment <laughs> rather than glasses? And I, that that headphones. I mean, this is uh, give credit to where it's due. This is Miriam Joao Tango said this. The original wearables were headphones. We just kind of forget about it because they're so widely available. Me, except the, I, I would actually, say that the original wearables were loincloths. Let's be clear. <laughs> I, I would say that that headphones are one step removed from what we're talking about, Vlad, because at, you wear them temporarily, not in the course of like your daily life. Whereas with a watch, it's something where you get up in the morning, you put it on, and you wear it till you go to bed, or maybe you wear it twenty four hours a day. Yeah. Well, this actually, like, we I did a, a panel at South by Southwest. Humble brag. That, <laughs> that was just a is, brag. Is, There's is, nothing humble. No. About at it. the end of the is panel, that, it was that, about is wearables. Is that something you want to brag about? It was. <laughs> at, it was at. It was about wearables. At the end of the panel, uh, this this incredibly smart woman comes came up and like just just nailed us. She's like. Why are you calling this stuff wearables? What is a wearable? And like me and a dude from Pebble, guy from Fitbit, guy from um, Whistle, we're all like, uh, yeah, you're right. This is a really stupid term. Nobody knows what it is. <laughs> uh, but like my my thing is like, to say it has to look like a watch is silly because watches come in thousands of forms. It has to look good. If it just looks good, then that's enough, and it can be a piece of technology. That's fair, but it, the the reason I mean. I think it looks good because it's borrowing familiar concepts from what we perceive as a watch. And it's like watches come in thousands of forms, but they all look like watches. And like there's, they're unmistakably watches. And I think that the Moto 360s unmistakably looks like something that you put on your wrist to check the time and other things. So there's a difference between looking good and looking alien. And the problem with most wearable technology, especially like the original Pebble, is it looks alien. It looks mm -hmm. unfamiliar. And at some point... It, no, the problem will stop looking cheap. alien. Well, alien. yeah, right. <laughs> like it just needs to not look completely alien. If it, as long as it's familiar enough, where you're not completely put off by it, we'll move forward. And eventually, you'll, you'll, your category of things that you're not put off by will grow. And so, like, well, like, you know, maybe maybe we'll get there, but, like, there's been concepts over the years of things that are, like, a full screen that wraps yeah. around your wrist. And, like, granted, if I were wearing a full screen around my wrist, that would look pretty stupid to most of us right now. I would also uh, mug you and take take your wrist <laughs> off. I was going to say. My, my, take my your wrist, futuristic wrist, wrist, wrist off. Wait a minute. You're the one that thinks that it has to look like a watch. You would want but the maybe, wraparound maybe screen? Maybe 360 well, no, is my second bridge. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll get there 
using like the concepts of the, the 360 and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that, look, any way you slice it, uh, regardless of your philosophy on this, I think that the existence of Android Wear, the existence of a common platform that anyone can come to and build upon is great news for this business because you saw the list of partners, including Fossil, which is an honest-to-God yep. watchmaker. Samsung. Samsung. HTC. Yeah, and those guys I'm less excited about, but, yeah. fo but Fossil specifically, <laughs> and of course... I, I wore a Fossil watch for like 10 years. Yeah. And, and so the, the fact that they're in on this and, and you know, undoubtedly we're going to see more watchmakers in the future say, you know what, maybe this is something we should try. Um, I think it's just it's well, great news. Well, what's hysterical about it, it, to me at least, is that Sony came out today saying that they're not going to use Android Wear. Yeah. And Good they're going to continue on. pursuing the smartwatch platform that they've Sony. been using, which just Sony. screams of a mistake Sony. to me. Like, they're going to be left behind. Sony. No developer is going to invest. They, they, they have a handful of apps for, I think they'll say that they over, have over 300 apps for their smartwatch platform, but none of them are really compelling. Uh, and, you know, the developers that care are going to go where... Well, look, you know, beta yeah. and memory stick did so well for them. <laughs> uh, look, guys, why Sony gets a pass. It can do whatever it wants this week after it announced Morpheus, the VR headset for PlayStation. <laughs> they literally, they, they can go punch a small child in the face. And I'm like, eh, it's okay. You made the VR headset. It's cool. Maybe but you didn't see him because you were wearing the goggles. Well, so I haven't tried them, but the consensus is that, is that they're no better than DK2 or Crystal Cove, right? Like, they're, they're as good. <laughs> no better. Not. Like, oh, my God. Oh, these suck. They're no better than the most amazing VR headsets around right now. Come on. No, but but Oculus is like... <laughs> it runs a, off a PlayStation. Oculus is a Kickstarter. <laughs> it is a Kickstarter versus the largest company, the largest consumer electronics company in the world until like five years ago. <laughs> they got to keep the costs <laughs> down. <laughs> until like five years ago when a bunch of other companies became larger. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, you are just saying. <laughs> Uh, but no, we are all in agreement that Sony Except has for Vlad. itself. Oh no, Sony, Sony's yeah. They need the watch thing is stupid. But yeah. Vlad is not in agreement on the Moto 360. Are you Vlad? You're you're very mad about it. Uh, well, I I just want to see it. Uh, my my thing is, um, I mean, usually I'm trying to find the happy side while we're having a big bitch session about <laughs> something. But in, in this particular situation, I just uh, I just would like people to curb their enthusiasm a bit. Um, and just take stock of the fact that we are, again, breaking into a new form factor, uh, a new and aggressively smaller uh, footprint in terms of how much you can fit, uh, how much hardware you can fit inside the device you're talking about with smartwatches and with wearables in general. Well, let's not forget that Android Wear is supposed to be a platform for wearables beyond smartwatches. It's just going to start with smartwatches. Um, because, I mean, if you think back to the beginning of Android, and if you think back to things like the first 3G and 4G phones and all of those things, it takes time. It takes months and years uh, for the hardware to catch up with uh, whatever ambitions uh, we might have. So I absolutely share uh, the desire to see these excellent devices, as Dita will say, with all those stipulations. But I just feel like it's going to take us quite a long time to get there. And uh, if Motorola accelerates that roadmap, great. But I also feel like battery life... Uh, performance, storage, uh, all those things that can really enhance the functionality and make these devices truly smart watches rather than just watches with a bit of tech tacked on on top of them. Um, that's Chris, the thing that's going to take time. And Vlad, Vlad can't see that, you raise saying. your hand, man. <laughs> Cold. Chris, Chris put his hand in the air in like the middle of your, your monologue there, Vlad. And you're making really good points, but he like you couldn't see him. He Hold just was <laughs> like, waiting for his turn. I, I don't know. I, I just need Vlad to hold the phone for one okay. hot second. And explain to me why we need improvements in storage for a smartphone to work. I mean, a smartwatch to work. Well, because, okay, well, this, this is, again, maybe I'm taking too much of a long-term view, but I really feel like smartwatches are going to be the next step. So we had the desktop, we have the smartphone, and then we have smartwatches. Like, this is where we're actually heading. And the reason phones became the central computing device for most people nowadays is just because they were convenient and they kind of matched the size that technology was falling uh, and shrinking down into. And now we're able to shrink the same things down into the smartwatch. And I don't feel like, you know, cloud drives and cloud services and the cost of uh, even wireless, but still it's a tether to a smartphone, is the thing that's going to compel people like uh, myself to own a smartwatch. But if you give me a smartwatch with all those important things that I can get from a smartphone, then, uh, you know, 
then we can be talking. Including a big screen? Well, no. Uh, no but I then I, I've never said that a big screen is an important aspect of a smartphone. That's when you get a nice small tablet and you stick it on your bedside table and your life is complete. I'm just buying a nice Bell and Ross and getting out of this whole smartwatch game. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Putting my think, money um, behind a real Swiss maker of fine I think devices. Dan is, is, is pulling a, uh, a classic move and buying a device right now. <laughs> no, um, I'm not. Uh, it, wait, is that the, the GPE? You can order the GPE edition of the HTC One M8 right now. Uh, it's seven hundred dollars, which seems high. It's not high. on their front page, uh, it like? and it's a two to three week shipping time. Oh, uh, two to three weeks. Isn't that like two Nexus Fives? Yes, it is. That's Nexus exactly five? what it is, Vlad. It's two Nexus Fives seven, worth every penny. Seven hundred dollars. It's actually fifty dollars more for the Google Play edition than the unlocked Sense model, which I do not understand. That's such that doesn't garbage. make any sense. Can you buy the Unlock Sense model right now? You guys want to watch so. us order phones? I'm going to just buy like eight <laughs> Moto Gs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 179. Just like I string mean, them together. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, so the other thing about the Moto 360, last thing, it doesn't have a perfectly circular screen. It has a little bit on the bottom that's flat and is not screen, right? Instead of a perfect circle, it's got the little notch on the bottom which is a bummer, but it's one that I can live with. But the reason I ask about it is there's there's two things that we don't know about it. Well, there's lots of things we don't know about. Two of the big things we don't know about is one, why couldn't they make the screen just circular? And I think it's just physics. But two, how do they charge it? Because They made a no circular screen on the Aura. Right, yeah, but how do they charge it? D That's they a were, good question. Well, uh, Wix was kind of, he played coy when yeah. he was asked that, right? Well, like, we assume yeah. it's just straight wireless, but there's no visible USB ports. There's no visible contact points on it or anything like that. So, I mean, I assume they figured out some sort of wireless thing. I just hope it's not like the Qualcomm Talk, which was the worst thing ever. Right. It would be yeah. nice. It would be nice if they could charge a smartwatch the same way you do an automatic, uh, you know, a mechanical watch. But I just don't think it generates enough power. Uh, where you have the counterbalance inside the case that rotates as you move. And that just generates power, but I, I I don't think that'd be enough. I just I just want to say that um, Chris Welch, one of our reporters, is telling me that uh, Verizon sells the one unlocked for five ninety nine. Well, I guess what? it's not unlocked off contract for five ninety nine. Can I can I use that on AT and T? AT and T right is six ninety nine. But can I can I like root and unlock a Verizon one M eight and use it on? AT Probably AT &T. won't get LTE. If my fiance is watching, I'm sorry. No, I'm not buying it. Not doing it. Nope. <laughs> Closing the tab. <laughs> Didn't do it. I'm okay. Um, no, the the Moto 360 is going to be inducting inductive charging. Like that's that's the answer, right? It's just going to be, unless it uses a sweet bowl that um, Intel has made. Intel's that'd got a bowl. The you bowl. Just throw your crap in it. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, you know, some people are saying um, on Twitter, uh, somebody is is saying that Motorola. Uh, let's see, Roid, Roid Ranger. Roy so, Ranger, <laughs> is that is that the handle? Uh, he's telling us uh, Motorola has this. Uh, I'm sure a, a solar panel display patent, um, which may be something, but God. we have yet to see any solar panel charging that produce enough power to realistically. Well, also, be if you wear a long sleeve shirt, you're just screwed. By the way, Roy Ranger, your photo of Barack Obama in a sweater, wearing safety glasses, and holding a cat, <laughs> is <laughs> the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> Uh, Royd <laughs> underscore Ranger uh, only has a few followers. If you are listening to the sound of my voice right now, please go follow him because he is hilarious and amazing. But I, I, I honestly don't know if we'll see solar panel charging. That, I, I think that, that would be a pleasant surprise and assuming it actually works, but it'd be a surprise to me. Maybe they'll finally use, they've been talking about like long range wireless charging for years, right? Yeah. <laughs> no one has been able to do it. Our, 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 producer, signals. Yeah. our producer, John, says that because the back of the 360 is perf purple, then it definitely is going to be an inductive charging. What, what does purple have to That's do with it? That's what I said. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I hope he's right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd rather have something If it's micro USB, then I'm going to buy one and throw it against the wall it's and not break micro, it. There's no port on it. Which, by the way, when the thing inevitably crashes not having a port, it's going to be a problem. It's, it would be a magnet like a like a pebble. When it crashes, not having a port will be a problem? Yeah, because you're going to need to put the firmware on it. <laughs> because it's Android. 
No, because how no. am I going to load cyanogen mod on my Moto 360? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Oh, people are going to hack that so fast. That's why I'm not yeah. worried about it not running on iOS. It's going to be fine. Yeah. All right. It's going to be well, just fine. We'll see. Yeah. Speaking of iOS, are you guys excited for iOS so 8? Just huh? worth mentioning. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Vlad. Sorry, guys. Just worth mentioning while we're discussing specs. Uh, one thing we overlooked with the HC1 is, uh, I mean, the specs are pretty, pretty much standard. It has the quad-core Snapdragon processor, 2.3 gigahertz. Most places around the world, it's going to be 2.5 gigahertz in China because apparently people over there just love their specs. Uh, and also noteworthy, it has a dual SIM, nano SIM version, uh, which again is probably going to come to China and uh, some of those other countries where people use more than one oh, SIM. Russia, again, not possibly. to the land of the free because you guys won't really have much use for two SIMs. And you know, what's interesting to me is we didn't mention it, but they put a micro SD card slot on it, which I found really kind of oh, yes. interesting. Like, I mean, I. You know, in the U.S., they're going to be selling a 32 gig version. It's going to be the only option I think in the U.S. is 32 gigs, but you can slap a giant SD card in there if you want, which is something we haven't seen on the HTC, on the HTC's flagship in how long? The One X yeah. didn't have it, did it? No. I've solved the uh, the mystery of the weird little bezel underneath the screen thanks to MRAM32. There's another picture of the Moto 360 that is in silver, and then there's another angle on it, and there is the tiniest little sensor that you can see. It looks like it's a light detecting sensor on it. If you look closely, you can see the little circle Quite in the so. middle of the black area. Looks like a light looks like a light sensor Maybe to me for brightness for, for, for automatic. Camera. No, it's for automatic brightness detection. Interesting. You heard it here first, guys, on the Verge Mobile Show, the definitive <laughs> show about all things mobile on the Verge. There are no so other just shows. Clear, you solved the mystery by being told the answer by somebody on Twitter. Listen, Vlad. He, yeah. <laughs> That's how it works, man. I mean, I can take credit for what people think. People, people tell me on Twitter. That's how the internet. That's how the world works. Yeah. I mean, Dieter cited his source. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if you if you write at Backlon and say a fact, I will uh, repeat it. I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to transition to iOS 8, but I don't know if, if we have it in us. I will say that this there, there was a leak of a bunch of icons, and one of them was text edit. And um, <laughs> Chris just wanted me to say that the Galaxy Mega is the best phone ever made. It's true. It's totally true. It's a giant low-cost Galaxy Mega Galaxy. Are you is still the getting, most amazing uh, phone. Chris, are you still getting royalties for the name on that? Huh? Are you still getting royalties for the name on that? I because you be. coined it like three years ago. I did. Like, you know, I don't <laughs> joke about getting royalties because people will believe you. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I mean, he, he named it on this show yes. two years ago. Yes. Like, they should call it the Galaxy Mega. And then five months later, at Samsung's like, here's the Galaxy Mega in yeah. five different sizes. Someone at Samsung was watching the Verge Mobile show, and they're like, oh, Mega, that's a really good <laughs> name for a phone. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. You were trying to make it. We, we, we were trying I'm to talk sorry, about health I have health to pedantic oh. and say that you can't get royalties on a trademark. That's I, copyright. Uh, yeah, but but I I can. <laughs> no, don't, I can't. Don't kill the dream. Okay. Well, okay. I, I'm sorry. I forgot about the Z Power exception. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> Thank the you. The Z Power clause. Uh, Dieter, yeah. you were you were attempting to make a point when I interrupted you with the Galaxy Mega news. You know, I think it's time we started having real talk about the Verge Mobile show. I, I think you're right. I think I you're think, right. I think that uh, the important thing to say here is we've had some good times. We've had some we bad have, We've times. had some bad times. We've, we've had, had some, some very bad times. Some awkward times. What was the worst time that we've had on the Verge Mobile show? Oh, every show. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what, using Hangouts. Um. Yeah, yeah. Hangouts did, did, did the job, you know. It let us talk to each other on the internet. Uh, no, my, my worst time ever on the Verge Mobile show. We we had some early ones with extreme delay, mm -hmm. where we were constantly talking over each other to the point where we had a meeting after a show to discuss the fact that we were constantly talking over. And each then other. what what happened? And then and, and then, then we started we talked we stopped, I, oh, stopped yeah, talking over started, each yeah. other. And then yeah, it finally ended. Yeah, <laughs> we figured it out. We we was, never yeah. did it and, again. And, and we in never... that respect, today is an actual throwback episode because with my Skype delay, uh, I am perfectly <laughs> overlapping with you guys. Uh, I just want to point out that Joanna Stern just favorited my tweet to you about the Galaxy Mega. <laughs> 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 You may have heard that the Verge cast is going on hiatus. Um, 
we are going to go on a lacuna, which I think is more amusing than a hiatus. What, it, no, we're going on a walkabout. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Australia. <laughs> well, we're going to get lost in the desert. A lacuna is an unfilled space, an interval, a gap. We're going to... Per- perfect. It just we're- makes me think of the racetrack, Laguna Seca. We're going... Yeah, Laguna Seca. Yeah. Uh, we're, going, we're, going to, um, we're going to a purgatory, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> limbo. Yeah, limbo. Limbo. Land. Verge Mobile <laughs> Show Limbo. Uh, how low can you go? Not much lower than this moment right now. Um, we will be back in some form or another. You will be able to download our voices again someday. Well, Somehow. even during this extended period of radio silence, yeah. we'll still be able to download old episodes. That's right. If 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 our viewers, you could you could even go back to the shows we did before the Verge Mobile show if you wanted to. You, you absolutely could. Going back to 2007, the uh, seven years of podcasts, goodness of our voices. The sky is the limit. Uh, I don't think that's the right Vlad, direction if you're doing that. But, <laughs> Vlad, what is uh, what is your your favorite and least favorite moment of the Verge Mobile show? Oh, well, I'm just going to condense them both into one, and that was when I did the podcast from the street. That was amazing. That, that was, was awesome. awesome. I don't think anything is ever going to equal that experience. Uh, the, I mean, that was the good side of it. The bad side of it, it was freaking cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to, to my phone, holding it up in front of my face, uh, with all my neighbors probably peeking out their windows and thinking, yeah, I'm not going to talk to that guy ever. Well, my, my, favorite, my favorite moment about that show was that you... Uh, we were. I was commenting that I was concerned you were going to get mugged, and then you were like, "No, I would be doing the mugging." Yeah, <laughs> which which I thought was a really uh, appropriate comment. Um, and then Dan, gotta turn it to you. Uh, I would say that my favorite is when we've all been able to be in the same place and and do a show in the same room. I I, I, I yes. always enjoy the fact, like whether it's CES or Mobile World Congress the or just World all Congress of us in New York, is my favorite. Yeah. We were it was like four in the morning. We were not entirely sober. We had strung together like two USB microphones across the room so they wouldn't interfere, and we were talking quietly or trying to talk quietly so it actually worked so that it, you could get two microphones. I remember this. Yep, and uh, it was great. And then I, we fell asleep hard. Yes, we did. No, we were. I remember in the, middle of the, the apartment that we were uh, <laughs> that we were in for that. We were in the video team's apartment, if I remember. Correctly. That's right. Yes. Um, and I don't so have a just, bad. Just I don't have a worse memory. Yeah, yeah. Our conclusion is that the best thing about the Verge Bubble Show was when we were able to do the show with as little technology as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so our big conclusion is we hate technology. We're going back to the jungle. And uh, put it on those loincloths, which, as Dita says, were the original wearable. The original yeah. wearable technology is the loincloth. The loincloth. The, the fig leaf. We're going back. Well, I guess the fig leaf. Well. So I, I think that the parting memory that we want to leave our, our viewers with is Vlad in a loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> Please Photoshop that for us. I'm sure that there's plenty of uh, base material to work off of out there. Um, so no, we are we are we're taking uh, an extended break, and that doesn't mean that we don't love you. In fact, we no, appreciate. It, it does. We we, we it means don't. we love you so much we don't want to do any more half-ass shows. We, we, no, we we don't we don't love them. Well, we love them platonically, just not romantically. Got to draw a line. Somewhere. Are you gonna let me wrap this? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just gonna keep going. You're gonna keep interrupting go me. Go ahead. It's all you. I lost my tr- my thread. You were talking about loving. My tread. You were talking about loving. I was <laughs> loving people. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no. Uh, we'll be back in another form, in another way, someday. And until then, you can follow us on Twitter. Dan is DC Seifert with an EI. Chris is Z Power with a Z. Vlad is Vlad Savov with uh, a bunch of V's. Um, I'm at Backlon, and since this is the very last Verge Mobile show, I thought it would be a good idea to finally reveal what Backlon means. But I'm not going to do that. Oh, oh thanks for watching, everybody. Oh. <laughs>